Hello everyone and welcome back to a new episode of Lunch on the Bates. I'm your fellow co-host Debo and my other co-host Matt. Always a pleasure to be in person with you. Always a pleasure it is. I do have to say, one of the pleasures I mentioned in the past was seeing our fits every day. Mm-hmm. Right? You had the Michelangelo shirt on. I think I shot it out. I thought it was really cool. This is one of the fits I'm not happy to see. Mm. Well, you're not rocking the chain? You're not rocking the chain? 15-15... We'll talk about go debate and where he sits and stuff like that. Right. Great player. Don't like the team. Just don't like the Chiefs. I understand that, but you know, it, hey, it's it's easy to root for the villain. It is easy to root for the team ha- at the highest top of the mountain. But you know, um, we're gonna be there for a very long time. So hey, I can't wait to be the most hated league for the next few years. Love it. Okay. Well, the. I don't know if th- this probably wasn't a topic we thought we were going to cover. And I want to ask you just before we get into our Super Bowl recap. Mm. Do you think Travis Kelsey's better than Gronk? Uh, you know, um, as a fan, I'm not really worried about that whole debate. I mean, I'm for me, I just like, you know, just him seeing him watching him play every Sunday just – it's no, no, no. It's, Answer the question. Oh, oh, damn. Okay, you don't want to get sentimental. Okay. Um, Come on. No, I don't think Kelsey's better than Gronk. Okay, good. Now, good. is there a possibility that he can be better than Gronk on the all-time list? Yeah, sure. But as of right now, I just think Gronk, the more complete tight end, uh, when you when you compare the two with their peaks, Gronk had the better peak by far. 100%. So I'll, I'll go with Gronk, uh, Gronkowski. Okay, I just I just wanted to make sure. Because there's some del- like crazy Chiefs fans on Twitter. Mm-hmm. On X, um, I just want to make sure you weren't part of that group. No, I'm not. I want to though. I've been thinking about doing that for a long time, but uh, no, as of right now, no. Okay. While I'll, I will say this, he's firmly at two on the all-time tight ends list. I think he's better than Kellen Winslow Sr., Antonio Gates, um, Tony Gonzalez, Chief Shannon Sanchez. Sharp, sure is Chief Legend. Um, those tight all time tight ends, I think he's better than him, and I think he's been past him uh, as of right now. The only person he's chasing on that all time list is Gronk, and who knows whether he'll pass him or not. But eh. I'd agree with that. Mm-hmm. I'd agree with that. Um, hell of a player. Hell of a player. Did you see all the pictures and videos that came out of him and Jason? Of Jason, bro, that man was fucked up during the after party. He was party. faded. Dude was hella faded. Did he? He almost stumbled into a tree. I saw Facts. that video. <laughs> oh, yeah, the 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 video of like them, uh, Taylor Swift and Travis walking, and then you just see in the background with like Jason and in the overalls, he was just going, <laughs> he was just wobbling. I'm happy for Jason though. That like he's the type of guy that can just enjoy the moment, be happy for his brother, mm-hmm. and he's not like pouting that his team is out. Yeah, I uh, man, I love him as a person, and I'm just super glad that, you know, he's enjoying this side of not worrying about the game and just being himself, hanging out with his family, uh, his wife and, and uh, kids, his daughters, and uh, just seeing Trav, you know, and Taylor being together happy. So I'm happy for him. I hope. I hope. Well, we'll see, but he might have one more year left. No, nah, I hope he retires. You want him to? I hope. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, because – um. I believe during the the tush push, <laughs> yeah, uh, dur- <laughs> that that might be that might be reason why. But um, during the documentary, the documentary about you know the Kelsey brothers, uh, he was mentioning that he's he's had like back pains over recent years. Uh, so I just feel like for him, right now, you're probably the greatest center of all time. You're all, you're all, you're obviously the most you know notable. Well well, well, well known offensive lineman in the NFL's history by mm-hmm. far, like by a long shot. Mm-hmm. You're basically a celebrity. You have comfortable money, and you've run you've won your ring already. You're yeah. a Philadelphia Eagles legend, NFL legend by far. You're gonna be a first ballot Hall of Famer when you're eligible. There's nothing left. Yeah, I nothing mean, I th- I think he wants to see what they do this off season mm-hmm. because if it's Jason Kelsey, like. Yeah, sure, the injuries are a huge factor that you want to consider. I'm not saying you don't. Um, and and the age is getting up there. But, like, if you got a chance to go out over the moon, because we saw this team in the Super Bowl just a year ago. Mm-hmm. They still have a very talented core. Yeah. Um, I think I think depending on what they do. But I think that's what he's waiting for. Yeah. Um, One thing about the situation was I, I just feel bad that he couldn't announce it on his own terms. I agree. Uh, Adam Scefter, he 
royally messed up with that whole too reporting situation. Yeah, too thirsty. Let let the athletes decide whether the, whether or not they want to announce their retirement with the Kelsey, uh, that saga, and especially with Tom Brady and his mm-hmm. retirement. Him coming back mainly because of that, one of the biggest reasons why. To just let the athletes make their own choice. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very personal situation. Just let them let them choose how they want to go with their retirement process. No, nah, don't, don't force it. hundred percent. Do not force it. Yeah, because like they've been giving you all this stuff to report on for the last eighteen years. Like let them do them. Like you don't gotta beat them every. Like you don't gotta be so thirsty to break the no. source and be the first one to get it out. No, no, not at all. Um, but with shoot. that being said, you want to get into the episode? All right, one more thing before yeah. we get out the way. Let's just talk about the halftime show real quick. Oh, get yeah, that out. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well done, well done. Yeah, just, you know, just kind of, you know, an easy segment to get off of before we get into the actual main segment of this episode. 100%. All right. Mm-hmm. What did you think? What did you think? I thought it was great. That was great. Usher was great. I, I thought the overall video quality, and especially the audio, I thought the audio was really low for his singing voice. Yeah. I couldn't I hear him at certain parts. So the production was a little bit off. But the choreography and the overall spectacle was a great experience. Um, Usher, he did great. Uh, Lil John and Ludacris coming out for the end of the segment. That was awesome. Alicia Keys did great in, in her in her appearance. Um, her, she looked great uh, with the, the guitar solo. The guitar solo, I'm not sure if she was actually playing those notes. But, hey, she looked good doing it. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's all that matters. Hey, that's all that matters, man. Hey, she's very talented, very talented artist. Like some of her songs. So, hey, so, salute to her. Salute. Um, Great I thought, Hooper, too. Great I thought, Hooper, too. I thought she, she carried the halftime show low-key. Her? Yeah. Wow. Okay. You don't think so? Hey, hey man, I thought... I would give that 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 nod more to Luda and Lil John, but she yeah, was great Luda, in her own in her own house. I did like Luda. Mm-hmm. I did like Luda a lot. Um, that was I, that was my first time seeing him with an afro. The afro? Yeah, oh, he's been had the afro, especially during his you know. Actual I haven't seen him recently. Peak. Oh, that's that's true. That's I haven't true. seen him recently. That's um, true. But but <laughs> you, I did not like Usher's outfit. His dancing, insane moves. Yeah, he has the same moves. Man, I can't same dancer. That man, man can move his dancer. body. No, pause. No, pause. Yeah, pause on that. Pause on that. But you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I thought Alicia Keys was like the best performer in it. Mm. You know that the one um, from you know when Usher was serenading her like mid show. I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, Swiss Beats, her, yeah, yeah, um, his that. wife. He went on IG saying that, hey, it's all good, it's all cool, which, okay, that's fine. But I, I don't know, man. Me personally, I don't know if you feel the same way, but I don't know. Because you see, because Usher, I mean, stuff like that, he's been in the news before. With I don't know if you, you didn't hear about that, but with Kiki Palmer and uh, her husband at one of his concerts, that whole situation, that, that was crazy. So, hey, me personally, I'm not sure about that, but, hey. Wait, to teach his own it's his opinion yeah um i saw something that they got married on sunday uh usher and his uh wife yeah yeah over over the weekend to to just get married and then be touching another girl like that i mean i i get this for entertainment you know and it is usher though. it is like, usher let's be real it, it it is usher but i, I don't know who I said know. no to usher all right let's move on i <laughs> hey I don't know. A lot, a lot of people would not. Yeah, yeah. That's well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey. Right. <laughs> we, we no, hey, one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. New Orleans next year halftime show. Lil Wayne got to be on it. Oh, Lil Wayne. We need no, Lil Wayne. They won't let him. Why not? He got too many cuss words in the songs. No. What? Yeah. They let Travis Scott do it. When did when was Travis Scott in the Super Bowl? Like, Twenty nineteen. The Patriots Rams. I was on a flight. Oh, that's fair. I was gonna fight that game. Um, um, like the weekend, he got a whole. Song. Nah, the weekend's not like dirty well, though. <sighs> like, like this man, Lil Wayne be rapping about killing people. He's not the thug allegations, but like he he does not have the nicest lyrics for like ten year olds to watch. 
man. Uh, Usher, Usher, bro. There were strip poles, stripper poles in in the in the, in the, in the background during That's Usher's true. halftime show. That's true. Man, Jay Z and Rock Nation, they're controlling the whole process now. They're gonna get Lil Wayne. They're gonna get Lil, Lil Wayne for sure. I, I mean, I would love that. Mm-hmm. I'd love that. I've been saying they should get Drake for a while, but Drake will never do it. Drake's gonna want his money. That's true. That's true. That's like asking Floyd to fight without money, with no money, or for no money. That's true. Certified uh, bag chaser, bag Floyd chaser. Mayweather, for sure. Unless he has to read for it. Damn, that's <laughs> crazy. That is, a, that is a mean Floyd Mayweather straight. Uh, You're not lying, but that was a mean straight. I just remember the, um, the 50 Cent video. <laughs> if you can hear. If that's you, one of my favorite videos of all time. Bro, it's so funny. <laughs> bro, it's so funny, man. That whole beef is funny in general. Yeah. But um, let, let's segue into the actual recap of the game. Obviously, Chiefs pulled it through in overtime, 25 to 22. In overtime, Patrick Mahomes wins his third ring and third Super Bowl MVP as the Chiefs solidify themselves as the NFL's newest dynasty. How do you feel about this, Matt? I've mentioned my thoughts about the Chiefs. Um, Many times. I have a co- you know I have a couple of different perspectives on this because mm-hmm. I'm a notorious Brady hater. Yeah. So to see number fifteen climb up, climb up that throne where he's easily number two, like I think consensus number two now. Yeah. He, well, in my eyes, he's been number two. He has been number two. By by people that a little bit biased for yeah. the for the Manning lovers. Shout out Andrew. Manning lovers, Rogers lovers, even Elway lovers. No, nobody has Elway at two. At least I hope. Some people got Elway in their top five. I don't understand that. Likewise, I don't understand. Um, so to see see Mahomes climb up, I like that in that perspective. I think he's. I mean, it's Mahomes. So I think in four to five years, we could like the the accomplishments he'll achieve will be Brady esque, and then he'll obviously have the talent and the. Brady just has such high numbers. It, it's like the yardage and the completions and the um, uh, completion percentages. Yeah, like high, Brady is most likely going to beat Mahomes in longevity, mm-hmm. that aspect, because I don't see anybody, even Mahomes, doing what Brady did mm-hmm. in their entire career, just playing until they're in their mid-40s, which is unheard yeah. of. Um, in, yeah. in, in football and being so dominant, like, consistently an elite quarterback year in, year out. Yeah. Um, and, like, Brady, when he was still young, wasn't making the athletic plays that, like, Patrick Mahomes relies on a lot of times. No. So he was able to age a lot better and mm-hmm. have that longevity. Um, hey, the, the check down wins games. Check down wins games. Yeah. Throwing it to the all pros, as A.B. said. Well, A.A.B. said a lot of things, but, you know. Hey, do, you, do you follow Antonio Brown on Twitter or do you not have a Twitter like a Twitter account? I mean, I have like Twitter, but like I follow like Nick's Muse and like four other people. You gotta follow AB on Twitter. It's do I want to follow AB on Twitter? You should follow AB on is Twitter. That, what is that like? Uh, What's that experience like? Peak entertainment. Peak entertainment. I've seen That's, some wild videos of AB. On uh, I think we all have some <laughs> that we. Shouldn't have seen, you know, especially in the public light. Yeah. But a hey, for his Twitter, peak entertainment, hundred percent. Shout out CT ESPN. Yeah. That's his brand. Um, but I also I also have this perspective, like, because I talked about the goat conversation between those two. But as like a football fan, I kind of look at it. And I'm like, the Chiefs relatively coasted this year, like. Oh, no, we were trolling. Yeah. Trolling for sure. Yeah, And, like, you started to figure it out as the season went on. Mm-hmm. Your young players like Rasheed Rice and Pacheco are just going to get better. Maybe you can finally get another wide receiver too, but it's like you haven't even needed it so far. And then your defensive side of the ball is figured out, and it's like I, I don't think they're going to three-peat. I don't know if we're going to get into that conversation. <laughs> but I think, like, just the way – like, this team is the AFC championship team every year. And you can yeah. lock it in. Every year. In a season where easily the worst team in the Mahomes era, yeah. the offense was basically incompetent the majority of the year. We only had, like, two games where the offense looked actually good, and one of them was against 
a Brandon Staley coach defense, and the other one was against a Bears defense, which at the time was the worst in oh, the league yeah. by far. Yeah, I remember that game. That was the first Taylor Swift game, too. It was. Yeah. It I was. I remember that. You guys were all playing out of your mind. <laughs> Everybody was. Experience. Hey, Travis, too. Hey, I respect that. <laughs> I respect that. I respect that a lot. He was showing out. Uh, oh, I think yeah, he, got, uh, he got, got he got a touchdown that game, too. Facts. Got a touchdown that game, too. You got to show out if you're going to pull up like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. You got to show out in front of your girl, man. You're for sure. You, you know what Mike is said. <laughs> you you got to show out in front of all all the all the good w- women out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. But I mean, who who do you think can stop the Chiefs in the AFC or just in the league? Looking ahead, obviously we don't know what's going to happen in the off season. But if fifteen and eighty seven are healthy, what do you think? I'm assuming <laughs> health. I I don't want. I don't want to sound cocky, but I'm not sure anybody really. I'm honestly not sure where we were. We where we've been at our lowest point in this whole run. Very vulnerable team. Baltimore, they're the they're the best team in the league by far. Buffalo, they're one of the hottest teams in the league heading into January. And we smacked them. Well, we we not not smacked. That's not the right term. But we we controlled the game throughout when we played them in the playoffs. What can you do? This was the biggest shot to take us down, and teams couldn't do it in the AFC. I I guess when you look at the whole landscape, Cincinnati when when they're completely healthy, when Burrow comes back, yeah. they have the best shot according to history. But we don't know what what this Bengals team is going to look like long term with Burrow, his new contract, how they're going to manage the salary cap. I honestly don't know. Is, aren't uh, T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd both free agents this offseason? I'm I'm pretty sure, yeah. but it's been reported that they're going to franchise tag Higgins. So okay, well that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yes, that makes sense. Um, well, I think Boyd will try to stay there, but mm-hmm. Boyd could be a wide receiver too on a lot of other teams. That's true. He's been capable of doing that. He might get big money from Carolina. Anybody's gonna get big money for Carolina. They might give to. They might throw Jawan Jennings a bag. Oh my god. Hey, hey, no, no. But no disrespect to Jawan Jennings, though. He, he's a dog. He's a dog. No, he's actually a good player. He's, he's a dog. A good like a genuinely yeah. good player. Yeah. Um, but I would not throw him a bag. I don't. He he's he's like a solid wide receiver too. I think. I would say more towards three. I would say three. Really? I'd say three. Really but fair. even then, like wide receiver, being a good wide receiver three is still valuable in this league, especially yeah, with the true. emergence of the wide receiver being so important in this, uh, in these offenses being more reliant on the pass game. Yeah, I think I don't know, like I don't know if it's like voodoo or, or voodoo. Voodoo, yeah. voodoo, my bad. You good? Um, but like, I feel like the Chiefs, if they're gonna lose, they have to lose in the AFC. I don't think like you're not beating Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes right now in the Super Bowl. <laughs> no, no, I, yeah. I agree with you on that. The for all of our Super Bowl appearances in the first half, we've we we, we were Always down at all of them. Yeah, Eagles and, last year. Mm-hmm. This year, obviously, we were down ten to three. Um, the Super Bowl versus the Bucks, we were down. I don't want to talk about that game. And the first Niners Super Bowl, we were down in that as well. And all of our Super Bowl wins, all of them came back by. Uh, ten points or more, so I, I'm in in February in the biggest game of the season. You can't count the Chiefs. You can't. We're not underdogs. Injury update: Onyeka Okongwu to miss seven to ten days. By the way, shit. I, I wanted to bring the breaking news live to. He's been ho- he's been hooping too. He has, and Clint Capella's already out for them. Yeah, he's gonna be out till after the All Star break. I'm not sure his exact. Timetable, but mm-hmm. uh, he's. I know for a fact he's gonna be out yeah. uh, until after the All Star. A lot right? of NBA teams are breaking down right now. Yeah, a lot of NBA teams, especially your team as well. So it, we'll get into the, that though. Yeah, this break was much needed for sure. Very much needed. Um, but what were your takeaways from the game? Takeaways first. Salute to Spags and his defense. I've said it time and time again. They have bailed us out so many times throughout the year. And yet again, they showed up where it mattered the most. Steve Spagnolo, mastermind, genius in 
one of the biggest games. Dominate again on that end like he usually does. Four chips as a defensive coach. I think the most all-time as an assistant. And it, with the game plan, defensively, we did not respect Brock Purdy in his arm. And with the Niners deep shot game, uh, I have st- some stats right here. 41% of the time, we ran cover one. And 21% of the time, he ran cover zero throughout the game. 60, 64% of our entire plays were in man coverage. And yet again, you we pressured Brock Purdy, made him uncomfortable. They, they had some success of them getting first downs consistently uh, once they were able to give McCaffrey the ball more in that second half. They would have moved the ball down the field, but there were no deep shots. I'm pretty sure Brock Perry didn't complete a single pass for 20 yards uh, in air yards. And we we saw this before when they played a team like the Browns, where the Browns, they mainly run man coverage with Jim Swartz as the defensive coordinator. And in that game, the Niners, when they were pressured, they looked very uncomfortable. Purdy was getting knocked around. Uh, inaccurate throws throughout and San Fran they actually had one of their worst offensive games of this year yeah so for us to get the blueprint the Browns had from that game and put it into the Super Bowl great decision yeah it worked out per- beautifully yeah shout out Spags um I really didn't like I mean we were talking about the Brock Purdy thing obviously Legereus Sneed after the game said we just wanted him to throw mm-hmm. um and I felt like that was a fault of Kyle Shanahan's. When we look at that overtime, it was third and four in the red zone. And I understand that IU uh, uh, beat um, LeJarius Sneed and then Jawan Jennings won his uh, matchup. But you're, it's third and four, and, and the only way you've been able to move the ball, like the most efficient way you've been able to move the ball game is running. Mm-hmm. And I thought – that's what you've done all year. Run it to the left behind Christian McCaffrey. Make it a decision on fourth and one. Because I right. think you at least get two. And and I don't know. To see them, like, just kind of – I think if you play San Francisco, it's like it's like hitting a three in a game. like Or it's like if Draymond hits a three in a game. Mm-hmm. Like, if Draymond hits a three in a game, it's something the defense lives with. If Brock Purdy's going to beat you in overtime, it's something you're going to live with. But you're not going to live with Christian McCaffrey running you downfield. Yes. And so I thought for Kyle Shannon to kind of go away from the running game and lean on Brock Purdy was interesting, and I didn't like it personally. Yeah, and as I was watching the game, the decision, in the mainly in the second and the third quarter, to not give McCaffrey consistent touches yeah. and to put the ball in Brock's hands, lean on the passing game, when you're going up against a secondary, which led by LeJerry Sneed and Trent McDuffie, They've been the best secondary in the entire league by far. So I didn't understand that. And I have on my notes, in the third quarter with a one-possession lead, here are the possessions they had. Mm -hmm. Pass, 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 then punt. Another pass, 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 play call scenario, punt again. And then on the last one, run, pass, pass, and then another punt. Wow. So in that sequence, they passed. Eight out of the nine times in those three possessions, punted all of them. Yeah, yeah, that that's poor coaching. That's poor execution. They had a number of plays where it was poor execution, where they were just getting uncharacteristic penalties. Like mm-hmm. we saw Trent Richardson get back to back holding calls. Like I haven't seen him do that since what year one? Oh, tr- Trent, you mean Trent, Trent Williams? Williams excuse yeah. me. Trent Shout Williams. out Trent Richardson though. Hope you doing well, Facts. brother. Okay. Facts. <laughs> um, Browns legend. Let's go. One thing that I've been seeing and that I can't stand. We were, we were talking about, like, delusional Chiefs fans. One delusional, or at least not one, but, like, a 49ers community thinks that the defense is to blame. I don't think that. I understand Mahomes walked them down in the fourth and in overtime. Uh. But they, he shouldn't even have even had the chance to do it. You mentioned that they were up one possession and, and had all those uh, miscues. They had the McCaffrey fumble. Mm-hmm. They had... Um, they had the where they recovered the Isaiah Pacheco f- fumble inside like the ten. They intercept Mahomes like um, th- if you don't muff the punt. Like they give you so many chances to win. 
that eventually Mahomes is going to beat you. Like, Mahomes is inevitable, and you just kept on giving him chances. Mm -hmm. Like, if if we saw everything that the 49ers did, holding the Chiefs to three points at half, basically single digits throughout the third quarter, um, and to do it with without Drake Greenlaw exactly, too. and oh my God, that was that was horrendous, horrible. That's um, so unfortunate. That, that's one of the that's probably the worst injury I've ever seen watching sports in my life. Yeah. That is so bad. That was so bad. I know, uh, and, and, and that was a huge loss for them. That was a very huge loss to Oren Burks, uh, the backup. He 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 won the game for for uh, Drake Greenlaw. He. He he was he was bad in pass pro, not pass pro, but pass coverage. Uh, I have the stats right here: nine out of nine catches when he was targeted, one TD allowed, and on PFF he had a 32 uh, percent, well 32.1 uh, pass coverage grade on PFF. Yeah. Not great. So he wasn't good. Yeah. He was not good. Yeah. And Kelsey was <laughs> running on him too. Yeah, and Greenlaw, you could feel his presence yeah, too. Exactly. In the exactly. start of the game. The how we got behind the sticks, that screenplay to Kelsey on the left side, who blew up that pass, mm-hmm. Greenlaw. Mm-hmm. And in the middle of the field, they greatly missed his pursuit and tenacity and IQ on that side of the ball and Throughout the game, post his injury, they were able to get more open looks. The Chiefs did with Rasheed Rice and Kelsey coming over on these cross r- crossing patterns. Yeah. It's just attacking the middle of the field. And if you remember, I can't remember if it was the Pacheco penalty or right before or when the Chiefs scored, um, but there was a play because Dre Greenlaw was out, Logan Ryan was in, and there was a miscommunication on play, and Travis Kelsey got loose for like a first down and more. Mm-hmm. And like... When Dre Greenlaw's in there, they have the best linebacking core in the league, and you know what's going to happen on defense. But when it's, like, new guys, there's miscues. I mean, they just said that they picked up Logan Ryan. Um, and so there's miscommunications, and then that's how you're letting crucial plays happen in the Super Bowl. Yeah, exactly. You, you could you could clearly see his presence being felt on that unit. Yeah. You could clearly see that. Yeah. So I just don't like the 49ers defense being blamed. Like I think they gave you, if if you can't, if you have to play better than that defense to be expected to win, no, I think I think the bar is pretty high for Mahomes then. No, um, and again, throughout the game, especially late in the game, um, obviously the Mahomes run on with the read option on fourth and one and multiple oh, yeah. third down conversions, I feel like Steve Wilkes, who by the way he called a pretty good, a pretty good game, pretty yeah. solid. The coverages he was calling was, were a bit too soft, in my opinion. That's true. But at the same time, the defense did all they could. Yeah. I think the fourth and one where Mahomes kept it, I think Bosa deserves some blame for sure because mm-hmm. he did not contain the edge at all. He ran no. straight for Pacheco. Right. That's true. Um, That's true. Pretty easy first down for Mahomes. Yeah, he had a clear lane to yeah. the first. But <sighs> Mahomes – Mahomes two minute drives, four minute drives, whatever you want to call it, game winning drives, prettiest thing in football. That's what he does. And I was watching with my family for the, obviously at, at home for the whole game. When when they had the ball, in those scenarios, there was some doubt. I'm not gonna lie, there was some doubt. But in my eyes, I wasn't worried. I was not worried because we've seen this man in so many situations like this before. Be clutch and put the Superman cape on when needed to. Yeah, I I just knew. Yeah, I especially, just knew. Especially with how the Forty ers were landing, you guys hang around. Yeah, that's playing with fire. Come on, man! Like I've seen this story before. We have seen this story before. We've seen it before. I do want to ask you something. Yeah. When we went into the Super Bowl, we did a little segment like who has the most to gain. Do you remember who your pick was? Shanahan. After this performance, right, we saw them blow another um, double-digit lead. What do you think? Is it is his time up in San Fran? Realistic, mm, sorry. Realistically, no. Yeah. Realistically, no. At the end of the day, Shanahan is easily an elite head coach. Yes. Top five solidified. Yes. For uh, although the the late game chokes in the both Super Bowls. And during this time with Atlanta, the 28-3 to comeback win of the Patriots had, he is still one of the best schematic coaching minds in the entire league. And 
consistently, the Niners have been dominant. They've been ha- having success throughout his tenure when he, when everybody's healthy. I don't think he's going to go away. I don't think John Lynch is going to go away too as well as their GM. So they're going to keep this thing rolling. But, again, it's it's such a hard pill to swallow for this team, man. Yeah. Such a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. Um, they're, they're in such a weird position, I feel like. D- Debo said that post-game that it was probably going to be the last chance, this one. Is he a free agent? No, he just signed a uh, contract extension. Uh, Ayuk is going to be a free agent. I, I saw the cryptic, the, the cryptic the, message yep. on IG and his brother talking too on IG as well. I don't know that's going to happen. It He want to pay there. Yeah, he wants to, to get paid, which I don't blame him at all. Yeah, he's he's up there. He's yeah. up there for the wide receivers. Um, he He's more impactful for that team as of now uh, com- when you compare him to, to Samuel. Yeah. And no disrespect to Debo, he he's great in his own regard. But Ayuk is such he's great with his route running, which with the great route running, he's obviously their best man beater on that unit. Debo and what he did lined up against McDuff, he got neutralized. Mm-hmm. He he's not a man beater, he's his own beater. And to me, in the modern NFL, you need the man beaters every time. Yeah, you need them every time. Yeah. Hundred percent. Um, but back to Shanahan. I th- I think you have to keep him. I think like he's just too bright of a mind to mm-hmm. let him go. Like we always talk about the Mike Tomlin and John Harbaugh scenario where it's like, yeah, if we fire a coach, like there's probably twenty five teams that can upgrade a head coach, but our, it might have just ran its course here. I don't necessarily think that's the case with Shanahan. No, they haven't. Yeah, they haven't. If if the course was ran, then after that Super Bowl in 2020, then this team would have completely fallen mm-hmm. off. Mm-hmm. But they haven't. And you look at them, I mean, they still have this, like, sustained success, right? Because they have the Super Bowl where they lose to the Chiefs. The next year they're in the NFC Championship against the Rams. Following that, they're in the NFC Championship against um, the Eagles. The really. Eagles. And mm-hmm. if Brock Purdy doesn't go down, who knows what happens. I still think they would have gotten beat really bad. The that the uh, the pass rush the Philly had, they were dominant the whole game. They were. I don't know really bad though. I don't know really bad. Mm. Bro, I I know he I had knew, very limited snaps, but Purdy was getting his ass beat. He was, but the wide receivers were also winning. The wide receivers were also winning. Um, but but this team is still having that su- this sustained success. They're a guaranteed to win the division every year, basically. Mm. Um, I'm, we'll I don't that. know. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. We'll <laughs> see because you this look might at be the, first year. the division right now and what what they could be in the future. The Rams, they they they're looking great again. Class. Great youth core right Class. now, both offensive and defensive, defensively. They they could be great in in the near future. Seattle they hired Mike McDonald, great defensive mind. Got a, got a great young nucleus on that roster. Arizona even with Kyle with a completely healthy Kyler Murray and Jonathan Gannon proving himself as a prime leader for this team moving forward. Who knows, man? Who knows? The NFC West is going to be a lot tougher for this Niners team to I think, repeat as division champs. I think the Rams are the best comp out of those three. The best comp. Yeah. True. Yeah. From a schematic standpoint with Mave, him matching the offensive mindset like a Kyle Shanahan, mm-hmm. which we've seen in over the past few years with the Kyle Shanahan era. He's been able to dominate over teams like Seattle and Arizona as well. So, yeah, I do agree with you. Yeah. Um, but – I think you just have to keep Shanahan because even if it means that you're not winning a championship, like I think, I think so many teams would just want to be in that situation where they have the have the chance to, and you can say that you do have that chance every single year. You have Kyle Shanahan. Mm-hmm. Could man. we will see, but at I don't know. <laughs> Niners on paper clearly the best team. They've ever had Kittle. Everybody's healthy for this moment. And, again, they just came up short. If this wasn't the year yeah. they would have pulled through, then yeah. when is that year? When is it going to come? The 49ers had, like, a ton of, like, 
heart attacks during the game kind of in a sense. Like, obviously, we said Drake Greenlaw went down, but Debo Samuel was out for a minute. Yeah, he had a pulled hamstring. Um, George Kittle went out for, like, a second. Um, and they had, like, they all went back to the locker room, and everybody was just like, sure, like what's going to happen? Yeah. If I was yeah. a 49ers fan, I would have been biting my nails. Super, super worried. Biting my nails. It, it was a very intense game. It was a super intense game throughout. Yeah, it was actually – see, this is why, like, we were talking about – how the previous Super Bowl between the Chiefs and the 49ers, like, it was an entertaining game, yet there wasn't much hype going into the Super Bowl mm-hmm. this year. Um, and we were both talking about how we thought it would be a good game, and it lived up to the hype. Probably more than lived up to the hype. Oh, it, it obviously way more. I honestly think for the first first half especially and parts of the third quarter, it was really slow. Yes. I didn't really enjoy the aspect of the entire game. But that fourth quarter in overtime, too, one of the greatest endings I've ever seen watching football in my entire life. Yes. I w- I'm going to say one more thing. I'm going to say one more thing. Y'all better pay Chris Jones. That man That man arguably won you the Super Bowl on two different plays. Difference maker. The one where Brock Purdy overthrew Debo mm-hmm. in the end zone, and then the last play, the third and four, before they kicked the field goal. Two crucial pressures. Mm-hmm. Two crucial ones. And with Chris Jones, the biggest critique us fans have had in his entire career was him stepping up in the postseason. Uh, through 2019 and 2021, well, not not 2021, 2022, uh, to the, uh, the first time he played against the uh, Bengals in the AFC Championship, the biggest critique – we had of Chris Jones was can you step up where it matters the most in January mm-hmm. and in that entire span I mentioned he really only had one game where he stepped up and that was the Super Bowl uh, and th- the biggest play he had was forcing the pick Jimmy Garoppolo had the first one he had with that huge pressure in these past two seasons these past Super Bowl runs brilliant fantastic last year in the Bengals game, we know how much it mattered to him the most because the year prior, that big third down, he had missing Joe Burrow with that sack and him getting the first down. Throughout the whole year, he he stated that he wants to get him back when we played the Bengals in the postseason. And in that game, had two sacks, had the game-clinching sack on that side of the ball, uh, getting Joe Burrow on that crucial third down, forced him to punt, and then obviously we had the game-winning field goal drive. And then this year, like you said, Matt, the two biggest plays of the game, two great pressures, forcing them to <clears throat> take take field goals and keeping the game alive for us. Chris Jones, he's a future Hall of Famer, one of no. the greats. He's going to be in Canada one day, and he has cemented himself as one of the greatest defensive closers and playoff performers in NFL history. In NFL history. I think, would you have him or Von Miller? I take Von Miller. Okay, good. I take Von good. Miller. Von, okay. Von, Von, prime Von Miller was different. Yeah. Prime yeah. Von Miller was different. You, you, you couldn't bet against 58 and come January. 100%. We saw that. We saw that way too many times. Super Bowl. So Cam Newton. Super <laughs> Shout out Cam, man. Shout, Shout out Cam. Cam. He's doing good well. podcast. Very good podcast. Very good podcast. Shout out Cam, man. I'm glad I'm glad he's getting his voice heard recently because throughout his entire career, he's had a lot of people, you know, discrediting the man and what he did during his playing time, and especially in Carolina. But I'm just glad he's been able to, to speak his own mind and give a good argument for himself and then be able to defend himself for what he did during his time in the, in the league. Um I don't know. Do you have any other comments you want to make on the game? Because I have a NFL-related question, like NFL newsworthy question. Shoot, I have nothing else other than a Colaptis, oh, Jones, yeah. Pinnell, Snead, Leo Chanel, Willie Gay, uh, McDuffie, Jamari Connor, Justin Reed, Justin Reed too as well, Jalen Rodson, Joshua Williams, and Mike Dana, other guys too as well. Thank y'all so much, man. Thank y'all. I, I appreciate what y'all been doing this entire year, bro. I, I appreciate that so much. You I should, get that you should make that a real and send that to all of their DMs. I might. See if they fly you out with the crown and the jersey. 
in the chain. I might. Free tickets first game. You guys got first game for the season. Who do you th- who do you think they'll put you against? Well, the team I want, I want Burrow. Ooh. Bring me Burrow. I, I need Burrow and Cincy to pull yeah, up there. You want a rusty Burrow your first game. You want that easy one. Nah, no, no, nah, nah, he's gonna be healthy. He's gonna be healthy. I want Burrow. I want Burrow first game. I want Burrow. I want Joe Burrow to come to Arrowhead first game week one. You think they'll put uh, the Packers? I think Packers will be a good game. I think they might put the Texans Ooh, week one. The Texans. Have C.J. Stroud be his, a first, his first official primetime game be against KC to, to start the year off. You know who I would like? Who? The Browns. The Browns? Man, we're, we're, That's gonna, a real well, we're, we're putting four on his ass. We're going to put four on his ass. I would not mind if you do. <laughs> Out. I would not mind if you do. Uh, I think the entire NFL community share, uh, can share the same sentiment um, as, as what you're thinking right now. Yeah, hey, that would be a free lick. That would be a free lick. Uh, that would be easy win. I don't think they'll do this to Rodgers, but the Jets wouldn't be a bad game. Nah, I can see that happening. Yeah. But I feel like first game Achilles, that's a big game. Yeah. First game back. I mean, he'll have preseason. Yeah, but the most likely opponent we're good, we'd be face would be the, the Texans. Yeah, They'd I could really Texans. see, I that. see that happening. That's, that's, a, that's a good pick. Yeah. Um. My question was, the news isn't official, but it looks like the Cowboys are going to hire either. Well, it looks like they're going to hire Mike Zimmer as their DC. It did say they're also looking into Rex Ryan, which I think is funny. <laughs> But he's a good. He's a good. He 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 can call it well on defense. But I'd probably not have either. Um, what do you think about the hire? For if they get Mike Zimmer, yeah, I think that'd be fine. I mean, they well, I think that's a huge downgrade. Huge downgrade over. I don't. I think Mike Zimmer. Like you saw in one year, what how this defense changed under Brian Flores. Mm-hmm. In one year, like sure they drafted some players and made. Some offseason signings, like none of which were really hyped up in the moment outside of Byron Murphy. Um, but the defense was like phenomenal this year, like one of the best units in the league compared to being one of the worst units just a year ago. No, but at the same time, you could kind of consider to, you know, point out the fact that he, you know, him being there for for a yeah. long time and the philosophy the philosophy philosophy <laughs> getting kind of stale yeah. and the message the overall energy the defense not staying for a long time which we saw that verse um in his last few years with the Vikings the defense was consistently a mediocre unit but I think with more of a new start in Dallas mainly him focusing on that side as defensive coordinator I think that would be a fine hire for them I don't, I don't consider that as a neat, real needle mover for Dallas moving forward, but for, for what it is, it's fine. You think it's a downgrade from Dan Quinn? I think it's a downgrade, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. We can agree there. By the way, speaking of Dan Quinn, did they say who his OC is going to be? They did mention that Eric Bieniemy will Clint, not be returning. Uh, Kingsbury. Oh, they did say it. Was I, I don't coach. like the hire. I saw they might try to trade up to one since they're at number two. I can see him doing that. try to get Caleb Williams back with him. Um. Yeah, I can see him doing that. Yeah. If they do that, then I like the move. Yeah. Oh, um, uh, is Drake May like that though? I don't watch college football. He is. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. is. Is either rookie gonna be as good as CJ Stroud was? <laughs> Bro, That's I, that that it's it's hard to tell with rookies being, you know, being put into a new system, adjusting to the NFL game in their first year. So, I don't know. Hopefully, they can. That's but true. CJ Stroud, he's, he clearly set the bar really high I don't, coming I, I, in. I, and CJ Stroud, pre pre draft, his overall report was that he was the most QB ready mm-hmm. out of the draft class, and that that kind of helped him overall being, you know, getting to a new setting and learning on the fly. Yeah, which compared to both Williams and May, they're both a little bit on the raw side. Both mm-hmm. need to develop their game. I, I, I wouldn't say that, yeah. but we will have to see. I was going to say, I asked with, like, some hesitancy because, like, this year from C.J. Stroud was one of, like, you could argue it's the best rookie quarterback season we've seen. You could. I, I'd say Andrew Luck's rookie year was yeah, better. Yeah, that's true. But, I mean, C.J. Stroud was 
top five in MVP talks for most of the year, yeah. if not all of the year. That might be an indictment of how bad the MVP race was this year. No offense to Stroud, but... That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's true. But, I mean, just for a rookie to be in those conversations true. is kind of, like, unprecedented. True. True. Um, true. Is there any other NFL news? What yeah, but, I, I, but going going back to what you said about the first game, I'm looking at the potential opponents we're going to face. You, you mentioned the, the, the Jets. I don't see the Jets here, unfortunately, uh, so yeah. then we're not going to play them. But I, I would love to see it, a Rodgers versus Mahomes matchup soon. Yeah. If we yeah. can't can get when that. When was the last time we got that? Because he sat out. Or he was, in, he was out with the suspension. Yeah, we've never had it, I don't think. <laughs> Wow. We never had it. Wow. And that was like raw Jordan Love. That was baby Jordan Love that yeah. y'all played. He didn't play that bad. He did it. He we did, did his parents dirty, though. And his whole face like family. <laughs> Those yeah, he put him in the nosebleeds. Yeah, we did him dirty. Classic, I'm not going to lie. Classic Kansas City. Man, no, we're not like that. We're a... You're not like that. Case in point. We're not like that. We're not dirty. We're a respectable organization. There are a lot of... Bro, out of all the organizations in the entire league, we're, we're at like the top. We're near the top. Mm, mm, nah, who do who would who else would be in the top then? At the top, give me some examples. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, yeah, I think Baltimore, Green Bay, Green Bay too as well. Baltimore, yeah. I would probably have the Broncos as a better organization, at least under the old ownership. Not not the new ownership. Yeah, we're talking about the new the new team now. The new regime, which that Denver they're <laughs> with, with their owner group, ownership group, new ownership group, they've done all they could. They've given the the yeah. o- the front office control. They haven't really uh, barked with them with football decisions. They've spent the money. What else can you do? Can I say that this is a learning lesson for for new owners? Because whether it's the NFL or NBA, right? We've seen new owners come in and try to make these win now moves. The, the the Timberwolves were bought by a new owner, and a couple months later, they traded five first round picks for Rudy Gobert. Mm-hmm. We saw the Suns. We saw Matt Ishbia by the by the Phoenix Suns. A couple years later, or not even a couple years later, like months later, um, they traded the whole caboodle for Kevin Durant. Caboodle. The whole caboodle. The fuck is a caboodle? Respect greatness. Bro, is that uh, no way caboodle is an actual word? Nah, I heard, I heard that when I was in fifth grade and I thought it was the greatest thing. Caboodle? Caboodle. Caboodle. Look it up. Um, and then we saw the Broncos try to buy with Russell Wilson right after getting new ownership. And how has each one turned out? Well, the furthest the Suns have made it in the playoffs was the second round. The Timberwolves haven't made the playoffs yet. They'll be a one seed this year, though. And then the Broncos haven't made the playoffs since, no. since the trades. Okay. Like, Off topic, but no way caboodle's a word. I, it's an actual that, word. No way it's an actual word. What's the definition? Caboodle, an informal way to talk about an entire bunch of some item or category, frequently within the phrase, quote, the whole kit and caboodle, unquote. The whole caboodle. I promise you. They say they say you need you should try to learn one thing a day. That's why you got to tune into Lunchroom Debates. Or education. For education, but yeah, if you're if you're an owner, if you want to be aggressive, do your homework. Because if you don't do your homework, it doesn't work out. Caboodle, man, what the, what the hell? All right, that that that, that was a good explanation, man. But goddamn, Caboodle. let's uh let's move on to to NBA. Yeah, let's move on to the NBA, and we're gonna kick this off with some last night events. Mm. Obviously, if you haven't heard the news. The New York Knicks and the Houston Rockets, that ending. Tied game. Clock was running down. Uh, J- Jalen Green got, got packed. He missed a shot inside. They ball got kicked out to Aaron Holiday. He he, host, he hosted up a three to beat the clock. And at the end, the refs called a foul, which you look at the replay. Some people, maybe most people, they're saying Brunson didn't foul him at the end. And um, to add on to that, the Knicks, I believe they filed a protest yes, about the end of game report. Yes, they did. So I'm going to give the spotlight to the Knicks fan and to give his thoughts so on that whole scenario. Th- the protest, whatever, they're going to say no. 
I'm a, like they always say no. Whether it was the LeBron block against Boston last year, where Eric Lewis had money on the game, money on um, the game, <laughs> allegedly, um, allegedly, or or this, the the protest was for the Knicks. The they're arguing, obviously saying that Brunson and Fallon are trying to play overtime. I think that's the wrong decision. I think the Knicks should be challenged and saying we should have shoot free throws. If you look at that play, the cl- there is contact on that play, but it's initiated by the shooter Aaron Holiday kicking his leg to the side. Yeah, the Knicks and the and the Rockets were both in the bonus. The Nick the Knicks are horrible late game free throws. I kn- I always say it. I always say there's three things in life that are certain: um, death, taxes, and Knicks missing late game free throws. So Jalen Brunson, he's not clutch when it comes to free throws. I could see him missing it, but. He should be at the line, I think. I think that should be the call. <clears throat> especially, I'm especially, excuse me, um, especially we talk about, like, look, we understand refs are not going to call a game perfect. We want it consistent, though. Mm-hmm. And in that game, you have two plays where where um, defenders are, are closing out on a three-point shooter and they get called for a foul. Team's challenge and it gets reversed for an offensive foul. The Dante DiVincenzo one was a little more um, evident than that. But I think if you're going to call the game that way, call it consistent. Don't change it up on the last play of the game when we're tied. That's what I think. Your thoughts? Mm, The main takeaway I have from this whole event, refs should be more punished for their missed calls because the Knicks, to have that game ruined, which they're in contention for the two-seed, they really want that spot come April in the playoffs when that starts. And for them to potentially, not not potentially, for them to lose on, on that on that call, a ticky-tag call, that should punish the ref for what they did. To me, with my theory or my, my concept for this, th- these whole scenarios, is to, one, make them do Post game conferences, yes, press I agree conferences, they have, to do that. have them discuss what happened, make them explain what their thought process was uh, for making the call instead of you know coming out with some BS statement, BS like two minute report saying da 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 this was the a foul, this was not yeah. a foul, yeah. And with another concept I have is to either find them or even suspend them for a couple games based on the extent of the missed uh, foul call. I don't think that they should f- find him. I don't think that they should find him. Um, it, it's so difficult because, like, the ref is someone who's supposed to be neutral. He's not supposed to be involved in the game. And so if you are suspending him, then it's like they are involved in the game, which means that, like, one, it means why are they affecting the game, like, that you're having to punish like punish them like they affect the game. Mm-hmm. Um but too like they're all they're all always just supposed to be like a protected class i feel like i don't like finding them suspending them i don't mind um i just i don't know like officiating never used to be this bad was it no yeah i mean it was before our time but in the early two yeah, thousands, yeah. during that whole period, especially in O two with Lakers and Kings, Tim Donahue, that whole scenario, it was probably really bad at that time. Mm-hmm. But right now, it's it's obviously not good. It, it's it's been really poor. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite NBA ref? <laughs> like the, uh, that one they're officiating. You're like, yeah, I actually like this dude. The one dude that looked like Gucci Man. Not because uh, like he's actually reffing, but you know he looked like Gucci Man and he actually funny. I, I like Bill Candy too. Bill he's Candy funny is as my well. favorite. Yeah, yeah, he he probably my favorite ref, either him or Gucci Man. Yeah, I don't know his actual name. The nobody. Does. <laughs> I'm gonna look it up. Nobody does. I'm look it up. Nah, I like Bill Kennedy. Um, there's who's the oh one? James Williams. That that's that's the ref. James Williams. Yeah. Um, who's the who's the older white guy? Not Scott Fo- Scott Foster, yeah. Which the Draymond clip of Scott uh, <laughs> him talking to Chris Paul. Yeah, that, 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 was, that was funny. That was funny. Did, did you see the clip of Draymond uh, in, in uh, talking about KD? 
No. Bro, he was baking KD the whole time. I saw him talking about Nurkic. Oh yeah. I saw Nurkic talking about him saying he didn't learn a thing. Bro, that that game was that game was a war. Warriors Suns on, on Saturday yeah. night. That game was a war. I yeah. love I, that was one of the best games of the year. Yeah. I um I went out to dinner that night and I got back like mid third quarter and I turned it on and it was like when you can turn on a game and it's just like in, you're instantly into it, that's how you know it's a good game. Very intense from the start. Draymond and Nergis. I, I believe that was forth. that was the biggest reason why it was so intense, you know, with their history and Draymond getting suspended. Nergis tried to, to, uh, to you know, try to get him under his skin, make him get, make him get loose, uh, force him to get a technical. But salute to Draymond. He he. He stood on business. And he ain't stand for that. And the Warriors are looking good right now. They do. They are. The Kaminga coming after the cut's been uh, showing his potential. It, it's it's a very it's a really nasty cut, but you know he's been playing he's really been good hooping. ball. He's been he's playing really good ball. Um, but let's get on to into All Star talk. Yeah. So what we're gonna do with this segment? I'm gonna go through all the events for this weekend. And we're going to give our predictions. Simple nice. as that. Nice. Lovely. Shoot. Let's get into it. First one we're talking about is the skills challenge. Okay. So with the competitors, we have team top picks, Wemby, and, and Paolo Banquero. Okay. Lead that, lead well, that unit. That's a, that's a good unit to start. And then team all-stars, Tyrese, your favorite player to hate, Trey Young. Nah, Scotty Barnes. <laughs> nah, I'm trolling. My fault. My fault. I'm trolling. Last I'm night trolling. the group chat was was hating. It was remember. he was heated. We it was got both. heated. But uh, <laughs> it was heated. Super heated. So oh, Scotty Barnes. Like, which one is Scotty doing? Oh wait, no, never mind. No, nah, did they all do the the dribble? Yeah, the, the, the dribble pass and uh, lay up in three. Yeah, whatever. just yeah, that competition. Damn, so Scotty might tell them. And then the team Indiana Pacers, obviously led by Halliburton. Miles Turner and Matherin, Bandic Matherin with that unit. Halliburton's doing it twice. What, what do you mean twice? The, wasn't Halliburton on Team All Stars? No. Nah, I said Tyrese Maxey. Oh, Tyrese Maxey. Yeah. Um, give me team top picks. Yeah, I think there's the perfect balance between passing, dribbling, and shooting for that competition. Yeah. Um,. Yeah, and Paolo, Vic, we're talking about dudes who can do it all on the basketball court. Not to say the other teams can't, but I just think like... Especially offensively, too. 100%. Especially offensively. With Team All-Stars and Pacers, I think there's a clear weakness in that regard. Pacers, with the pass competition, Matherin and Turner, they're not passers. So how he's going to carry them in that in that section, all, as well as Team All-Stars with Scotty Barnes. Mm-hmm. Not being really as good of a passer as well, mm-hmm. although he, he he's a he's 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 been on his own. He's still he's still on his own in that regard. Yeah, so shout out to him. Just get the All Star game out of Indiana. Out of Indiana, we need we need to have a restriction on the All Star game moving forward. Miami, Toronto, New Ka- York. Cali, New York. Yeah. Those are really the only teams. Texas, maybe. Texas, yeah, put in Texas, Dallas, Chicago. Like, oh, Chicago's a good one. Oh, you said Texas. Uh, Dallas, Chicago. What else am I missing? All the big, all the big cities. I would say Denver. I would say oh, Denver. Oh, De- Denver. We, they the just last disrespect time, us. The last time they had the All Star game in Denver was like oh four oh five. They disrespect us. No Copa America games. No, no World Cup games. Um, everybody clowns on the altitude, even though we never heard it before. Come on now, we we're a good sports city. That, yeah, it's a good sports city. Yeah. It it'd be a good place to have the All Star game at. Philly, uh, Philly's a good pick. Oh, and in DC, in DC, I put in DC too. DC, yeah, I put uh, in DC. I'm trying to think down south, probably Texas. I mean, Florida. We said Miami. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I never wanted to see them playing Utah again. That was horrible. I yeah. never want that. The atmosphere was so bad. Yeah, like everybody, the <laughs> TNT guys especially, they were baking the the apps for, for putting it in Utah. Yeah, um, so never again. They got that. Never again. All right, next event. Yeah. So, are you going with team top picks? Team top picks. I'll go with team top picks as well. Yeah. All right, 
three point contest. We have Dame, Tyrese, uh-huh. Halliburton again, Donovan Mitchell, Malik Beasley, mm-hmm. Jalen Brunson, your guy, mm-hmm. and Lloyd Marketing. Wrap it up. I'm going to tell you, all right, my top three. I'm going to start with my top three. And you might laugh. Dame, out of respect, Malik Beasley, and Larry Markkinen. Mm. I, the thing about the three-point contest is I like taking dudes who are accustomed to catch and shoot threes mm-hmm. as opposed to doing it off the dribble. So, like, a guy like Donovan Mitchell, he's great at shooting threes, but he primor- primarily does it off dribble. Same with Jalen Brunson, although he does more off ball than Donovan Mitchell. Um, Tyrese Halliburton, I don't want to take just because his release is yeah, slow. Exactly, he's a slow release. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Um, he's a good shooter though. So, but. so I would I would probably have it between those three. I feel like Dave might win it, just because like he he wants to make everybody think he's supposed to be that All Star starter, especially at All Star, and he's just like the three point guy. Got a little bit of something to prove. But I'm going to take Lowry. I'm going to take Lowry. Always take a white boy in a three-point contest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out Joe Harris. Joe Harris was shout cooking that one, that one three-point contest in Charlotte. He beat Steph. They, they should put Dante in this one over Branson. Steven Chinzo? Yeah. Hell no. Nah. Nobody want to watch him. Like, But if they want to put like the best three-point shooter, it's him, Neesmith, who's leading the league this year. That's true, Neesmith. Like, if they want to if they want to just let the, the three-point specialist cook. Hey, we talking about white boys. I want my guy Hauser in that joint. I want Ooh, Hauser. Hauser man. Hauser's a good name. I want Hauser. <laughs> Hauser would be an excellent fit. I'm trying to think who else. Isaiah Joe would be in there. Oh, Isaiah Joe's a sniper, yeah. He should be in the all star or in the three point contest. hmm Hey, he's he like well well above thirty not not thirty, forty percent from three this year? Yeah. Every year the last Every two years. Yeah, I mean the last two years. That boy that boy's a sniper. Yeah. yeah. Sniper. From anywhere too. Absolutely. Um I think it. I mean, Anthony Simons probably would have been in it if he didn't get hurt. Mm-hmm. He was because I don't know if you heard. He said he was on the JJ or he was on the JJ Rank podcast, and he was like, they asked him like, when do you feel comfortable shooting? He's like, basically one foot inside half. Like that's my range. Mm-hmm. Um, but who are you taking for the three point contest? Uh, I'm picking Dame to repeat. Yeah, I got I got Dame. I think the guy you got something to prove. Trying to repeat as the three point contest champion, mm-hmm. you know he's ready for the moment. He's been ready for the moment, so I, I'm I'm picking Dame. Nice, good jumper, great jumper too for this type of things. Uh, quick release, you know, reliable catch and shoot guy. So I think he's got it. Yeah. Um, I'm glad we we're we're, we're like on par so far because I had Dame. He was like, it was between him and Laurie for me. Mm-hmm. And I kind of want Larry to chill, to troll a little, but that I mean, he, he could win this one too. Yeah, he could I actually think he could. He's, I'll not be surprised. He's because he shoot over forty percent, I think, mm-hmm. on like a lot of attempts a game. Mm-hmm. All right, this next segment, I have the three point shootout between Steph Curry mm-hmm. and Sabrina Ionescu. Give me Steph. I got Steph as well. Give me stuff. Although I am, I, I'm happy. Or I'm looking forward to seeing the sneakers. That's true. The Nike Sabrina ones might be the best in that game right now. That's true. Straight heat. Uh, doesn't my uh, MPJ with them? I think he does. Okay. I think he does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it's either between him or Beyonce Stewart with, with his shoe. Mm, um. But give me stuff. Okay. I understand Sabrina's got it, but give me the best shooter of all time. Right. Just off the fact that although Sabrina. Great basketball player, been hooping in WNBA ever since she's been in the league. Her her three point shooting contest she had last season, that was phenomenal. I, I watched that live actually. That that was Class. brilliant. That was brilliant. But I off the fact that we don't know how well she's gonna do with the three point line and the ball, which she has said that she she will shoot with the NBA ball and so the WNBA ball. Mm-hmm. Off that alone. Although she's a great player in her own regard, great three point shooter, I just got Steph because we don't know what she's gonna do. Yeah, she better she better perform though. She I think I think she will. She's she gonna have a good perform. show. Otherwise, sh- Twitter's sh- gonna sh- be a crazy place. Twitter's always a crazy that's place, especially well, well, for like the true. WNBA, bro. It's crazy, unfortunately. But well, same for time, MPJ's podcast, <laughs> that, that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that man got baked. That <sighs> man got baked. Yeah, that man um, got baked. Yeah. 
Yeah, give me stuff. Give me stuff. But that should be fun. Is it? I assume it's the same day as all of those. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be uh, as well. Hold on. I assume next contest you have is dunk contest. Yeah, but I have one more thing to say about the contest between yes. Curry and Yonescu before we get into it. I do not know why the NBA just made a big announcement out of it. I just think it took some of the exci- the excitement out oh. because to compare, you know, you remember the the uh, shootout between Kevin Hart and Draymond. Yeah. In, in Toronto in 2016. Yeah. <laughs> Did the, Draymond lose? I, it was a tie. I think. Oh, but I, I, I don't think. He missed, I think Kevin Hart won. I think Kevin Hart won. Kevin that. Hart w- won, but like it was a buzzer beater. Like he got yeah. the shot off. Like. Yeah, they miscounted by one or two shots. Yeah, which is funny. <laughs> the thing about how that shootout between Hart and Draymond was so great was that we didn't know it was a complete surprise. Mm. That that just made the element so much better because. With this new thing, they just announced it out the blue. So for the average fan, they're gonna be like, "Oh, what's gonna happen? This is exciting. This is crazy." I think. Well, one, I agree, but two, I think if you are gonna announce it, I think at least like do it right now, like just a couple of days before, because I think there was hype that came when the first announcement came in, and a lot of people were excited about it. But it was like a week and a half ago at this point, and so mm-hmm. the hype and and has has worn off, and people yeah. aren't amped up for it anymore. Right. Um, so I, I just think that that whole miscue that that was a big L on the NBA's behalf. I, I in my opinion, keep it completely secret until the day of the all, all the skills challenges. Mm-hmm. Keep it completely secret. Mm-hmm. That just brings out all the entertainment. It, it the, the entertainment factor is so crucial with these moments, man. That's what makes All Star Weekend truly great. I think for these past few ones, you've been really missing that. Yeah. Really yeah. have. Um, well, one reason we're missing that is also because of the dunk contest. That's true. We're going to lead into that, too. Um, For the candidates, hold we on, have... Hold on, hold oh. on. Let me guess the candidates, because I don't know who's You haven't seen the list? I haven't seen the list. Uh, I, I think ha- Jaime Hawkins is on it. Yeah, that's okay. right. Okay. I think he's the only one I saw. Um, But, all right, so how many are in the East versus West of the remaining three? One in the East, and then the other two are G-leaguers. Mac McClung, obviously. Yeah, that's one. Um, one's in the East, you said. Yeah. One's in the East, you said. Playoff team last year or no? Yeah, playoff team. Playoff team. Jalen Brown isn't doing it. No, no Boston Celtics. No Seventy Sixers. No Milwaukee Bucks. No New York Knicks. Obviously, I would know. It's not Obi Toppin. Obi Toppin isn't in there. No, he's not. No. He obviously have Hawkins, so it's not gonna be him. Um, who does it? The Brooklyn Nets. Mm, is it? It's not Dennis Smith Jr. No. It's not. The, the Nets have a couple. Lonnie Walker. No. Okay, so not on the Nets. Damn, what team am I missing? Boston played the Hawks. Do the Hawks have a player? No. No. Yeah, I was about to say. You sh- they made the playoffs last year. Who did? I asked if this team made the playoffs last year. Oh, uh, Atlanta did make the playoffs. That that's the team he's on. No. But but they're in the playoffs. They made the playoffs. Yeah, they made the okay. playoffs. Okay. Yeah. Um. Milwaukee put the. Oh, the Cavs. No. Who do you play then? The three seed. I went through every Eastern playoff team. Eastern playoff team. The Bulls. The Raptors. No. The Raptors then. No. Damn you! Okay, so he's on. He's on the Celtics. I said the Celtics. You, you, you kind of. I, I kind of got threw off on how you like my broke, my broke my the my teams my down, my but my that's my fine. He's on the Celtics. He's played for both. Celtics. Teams. Yeah. Okay. Now, now I have to lock in since you give me two. So Drew Holiday, no. Hell no. Derek White would be funny, but no. No. Tatum, I doubt would do it. No. Not to Jalen Brown. Um. Chris Stops, no. Al Horford, no. So then there's. Peyton Pritchard, which I doubt he can, he'll no, be a token. No, no. Jaden Springer, no. If they count him, Lamar Stevens, if if he's technically a Celtic, no. Um, have you said Jalen Brown? I didn't think it would be Jalen Brown. This is Jalen Brown. There's your answer. That was the first player I said, and all of it, I was like, no. <laughs> all right, so Jalen Brown. Yeah. And then the G League just tell me who it is. Terrence Ferguson. No, I don't think he's even playing. Uh, uh, Jacob Toppin, Obi's brother. Oh, yeah. Dang, there was a Nick. Yeah, 
There well, wasn't like, wow. G League version. Yeah. Yeah. Westchester Knicks. Westchester. <laughs> uh, I think he's been doing. He's been playing well in the G League. Shout out Jacob. But he played uh the other night against not the yeah. Rockets, um, the Mavericks, when we had seven players. Mm-hmm. Um. So who who do you got for this? Mac McClung. Yeah, Matt McClung's re- repeating. Right in the back? Yeah. Right in the back, I think. I think so. But I did see some clips of Jaime Duncan in high school. He looks pretty athletic. Yeah, but the the thing about the slam dunk contest, you can dunk as well as you can. You can be a phenomenal dunker. But the thing that matters probably the most is doing it with a big crowd in front of a live audience. Yeah. And an example I like to give was Derek Jerry. Jer- Mm. Derrick Jones Jr. He did it back in 2017. He was in he was in that dunk contest, and for that one, he was really mediocre. Even though he was really hyped up, uh, coming out of his, his his tape and people seeing him do the, all these crazy dunks in game, the 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 crowd factor it 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 matters, man. Yeah, it matters. That's true. Um, I think another thing that matters is getting it first try. Mm-hmm. You got to get a first try, in my opinion. Like otherwise. No chance out of 50. Yeah, because you you don't get a first try. Even your second try, the crowd completely dies down. Yeah. You got to get the crowd into it. Yeah. And that, that's what made uh, Max dunk contest last year, his performance so special because, one, he did it first try, and, two, the crowd was super pumped up, largely due to them not knowing who Matt McClellan is as mm-hmm. a player and being, like, relatively new, which for us real hoop heads, we've been known about Matt McClellan and what he did in high school with uh, his ball, his ball is live mixtape. So I was surprised with how well he did, knowing that he's been under that pressure mm-hmm. with his past basketball career. But him getting the crowd into it and doing all of his dunks first try, difficult dunks I might add too as well. That that was just heightened his his factor as a dunker and him winning that contest uh, last year. Yeah. Um. So we obviously know that these are our four candidates. Mm-hmm. Everybody has a, has a top four list of their ideal dunk contest. Who would be in your top four, or who? What would be your dunk contest? So did they they have to be like current in the NBA right now? Yeah, yeah. All right. In previous years, I would have said Zion, but with his injuries, I don't think he, I don't, don't think he'd be the right fit. Uh huh. So right now, I'm gonna say Ja. Okay, so we agree there. I'm gonna say Ja and. Yeah. Yes, that's a good one. <sighs> Who else? Who else? Ja and Donovan Mitchell, maybe. He did it before. I think he. Yeah. I think he won it. Uh, I, I want to take I, him really. Maybe. Levine. Uh, nah, you're not taking Levine right now. Ag. Who? Ag. Aaron Gordon. Yeah. I take Aaron Gordon again. Aaron Gordon. He should have won. Let's be real. He should have. Yeah, he should have won. He should have. He should have two one. Two yeah. ones right now. Yeah. So so currently right now, and um, Ja and Aaron Gordon. Who would be my fourth? LeBron. No, that's that time's been passed. Basic. <laughs> yeah, that 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 time's been passed now. Um, I'm trying to think about like high flyers. Kuminga's a sleeper pick. Mm. Jalen Green. Hell no. Jalen Green. He, he's athlete. banned from. He's banned from that after he did that NFT dunk bullshit. Hell did, no. Did you see uh what he tried to do to win game yesterday? That you said get that shit out of here. Yeah, I, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. He he played bad last night too, unfortunately. Really, I thought that was one of his better games, at least in the first half. Yeah. First, well, first half nothing could go right for Knicks. Oh, am I, am I tripping? Right for Rockets. Oh, am I getting another game wrong? Uh, last game, last game he was just aggressive. Like he got all his points just driving to the to the line and getting fouled. Nah, he shot four for fifteen, but he got to the line a lot. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, second half he was asked like the rest of the Rockets teams. Jeez. But fourth player, fourth, fourth. Paolo? No, I don't think you. You don't got enough bounce. Sucks? No, you don't got enough bounce for that. Jeez. Um, I would want to see book. I'm really trying to think. Oh my god. Wemby's like Wemby couldn't do anything cool. <laughs> no, he's he's too big. Yeah, he's too big. 
Like you have to be the perfect size for that. I don't think Shay would be good for a dunk no, contest. You don't got the, you don't got the bounce. Oh, Jeez, I'm trying to think with the fourth one. Not Kawhi, not PG, not Jokic. I might honestly have to put Zion in there. No, not Zion. Who, who else would Giannis? you? Giannis. No, no, he can't. He's too big for that. You don't think so? He's too big. I th- <sighs> like the height really height really matters. Like big men don't big men. But they always gotta have one big man. You always got yeah, get. yeah, but you, nah, you you can't do it. Like uh, if 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 they gotta put a big man in there, you gotta be like uber athletic, like a Dwight Howard in his peak. Even even back when he did in twenty twenty, he was great. Ooh, for what, what he about did. like a Daniel Gafford no. or PJ Washington? No, he did. Miles no. Bridges. If he didn't have the stuff behind him, bad PR. Nah, <laughs> can't, do can't do that. Assuming no PR, no PR, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, that's not a bad show. No, it's not. Um, I, Kaminga's, I like Scotty Barnes maybe, but he's big. You don't got the bounce. You got to have bounce. Who got bounce though? Outside of the top. Brown. He, but he's in it already. Yeah, Jalen Brown do got bounce. So, I, 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 I would say Jaw. I, from my list, I say Jaw. Um, who else should I say? Uh, Jaw and uh, AG. AG, Aaron Gordon, and Zion. And Zion. Yeah. Mm, give me Miles Bridges, then. Same list, Miles Bridges. <laughs> we don't care about PR over here. Not Jerry Pretty Jones Jr.? Sure. Not Derrick Jones Jr. Uh, I say Derrick Jones Jr. would be better. Um, he's a better leaper. And he's been there before and, and did well. It's like taking Will Barton. No, he did. Will Barton, Jones, Will Barton got eliminated first round. Oh, though. Derrick Jones Jr. was going band for band with Aaron Gordon in 2020. Yeah, true. I'm saying, um, but Will Barton got got hold. How how Will Barton get hold? He didn't make it past the past the first round. They did him dirty. Damn dirty, bro! It it was it was AG and Zach Levine. If you weren't AG or Zach Levine that night, get the hell out the way, get off the stage. No, no, no! I think he was a different year. I think he was way before them. No, nah, that that was the only year he did it. I swear. Yeah, I swear. Um, but yeah, then give me Miles Bridges. And then if if we care about PR, give me LeBron, the most nah. PR player of all time. I want to see. Ooh, I want to see LeBron. What about Russ? No, or not I, nowadays. Yes. Times pass. Fair. I want to say Russ. Fair. Ooh, maybe Shaden Sharp if he's healthy. That that's a good pick. Yeah, I would say Shaden Sharp if he's healthy. Yeah. Mm. Um, but quick segment, quick segment though. While we're on this topic, yeah. What is your favorite All Star? Nah. What, sorry Again What was your favorite Dunk contest Dunk of all time Oh Easy Aaron Gordon You'll see me on the screen Right he went like this Over the mascot Oh the Netflix And show dunk Yes Word okay. Yes Okay um, And then the the one Where he followed it up Was pretty crazy too Where he was mm. on the hoverboard mm. But Yeah That was the best dunk I've ever seen in my life I, I mean Like the, the Blake Griffin dunk Over the car Is super cool but it, it wasn't a great dunk. It was a little bit overrated because yeah. he didn't dump. O- he he only dun- dunked over the hood of the car. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If he if he did the whole thing, it would have been a lot cooler. Mm. Um. So yeah, give me the Netflix and chill dunk. Thank you. Okay. And you? Okay, I I only put the it have the you know it, within my my lifetime like watching all the dunk contests. Yeah. Dunks. yeah. Right. Oh. Uh, Otherwise, Vince Carter would have been there. Yeah, it would have been there. Greatest dunk contest performance of all time we've been on this. Right. Probably will never get topped. Yeah. Who do you take it? I think I think that AG dunk was just insane. Hmm. I'm going to say the in 2020 with Aaron Gordon, mm-hmm. I'm going to say he the dunk he had over Bowl Bowl, I believe. I think he don't over Bobo. No, Taco Fall. Oh, I said Bobo. Oh, uh, yeah, Taco Fall. Fall. Taco Fall. Aaron Gordon's dunk over Taco Fall. Yeah. How tall is Taco Fall, by the way? 7'3", for our viewers that don't know. <laughs> Maybe I, taller. He, yeah, I think he might be taller. Maybe he, he's not 7'5". He's not a big side, is he? He's 7'6". And he dunked over him. Damn. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive, he but, went, but he, but he under, touched him a little. No, it doesn't matter, bro. He jumped over a seven six dude and, and made the dunk. Yeah, 
and still managed to lose the dunk contest. D D Wade D Wade did him dirty. We've been on this. Yeah, yeah insanely did. dirty. Yeah, insanely dirty. He wanted that heat player to win it. it was, yeah, that that was BS. So, but so hopefully with this year, is is gonna be greater than what we saw last year in Utah. Um, with <clears throat> during that time, right? I think before yeah, the week before uh, the event actually happened. Uh, we made an episode. The main segment was um, things we could do to fix the dunk contest. Yeah. I gave my opinion, and well, <laughs> there was a, there was the, the real there was a real we did about first one like, that blew up. Yeah, the first one that blew up officially on our on our page. Uh, how to fix the dunk contest? Yeah, I had I had my idea to to do it. I gave the suggestion of having a one million dollar prize prize pot for the winner. And a Magic City go- a coupon as well. I thought my idea was great in nah. my eyes. I think it's I think it's bad for the league, like optics wise. Like now, because there's a prize, we're gonna care. I mean, it happened with the in season tournament, but I think if they if they advertise it in the All Star game, it just looks a little worse. Money cures everything, man. I'm saying. I mean, I'm not saying the players won't buy in. I'm just saying it's bad for the optics of the league. Mm, nah. No, nah, I don't think so. In that regard, not really. You it's like so. an incentive. Yeah, exactly. So like, where your fans were voting you as all stars, we obviously care enough to vote. And the only way that you're gonna perform is if we pay you a million dollars. I mean, if, if for the fans, if they get to see Ja and and other, and other stars do it, then that's would they point. be really mad? That's a good point. Exactly. That's a good point. I think the NBA would find that if they actually paid that one million, though, it'll probably turn out in like more money. Whether it's like advertisers wanting to get in because the dunk contest is legit exactly. now, exactly. Or like people just buying more merch or, or buying more streaming services. And the NBA don't don't throw more money at certain things if they want to. Like with the in season tournament, they had a huge prize pot for that too yeah. as well. Yeah. Which shout out to Adam Silver, one of the players to take the regular season serious and. I yeah. haven't heard anything about load management. That was great ball. No, nah, I haven't heard that for this year at all. They've been yeah. playing this entire season. Which, you look at it too, and, and I think that this is one of the more interesting things in the league right now. And I'm not a doctor. I want to I wanna say that before. Like, we are seeing these teams get hurt now towards All-Star break, but I feel like in the past, especially like last season and stuff, we saw way more injuries. Yeah, we did. Way more injuries. And the fact, and that was when everybody was, like, taking these rest days. And, you know, Paul George has come out on his podcast multiple times, and he's, like, been like, well, when I'm on one day and I'm off three days and I'm on one day and I'm off two days, like, I can't get a a rhythm. Mm -hmm. When it's on practice, on, like, light practice, on light practice, light practice, like, on. Like, he's like, then you get a rhythm, then your body's used to it instead of, like, this quick, like, changes, like, back and forth, back and forth. So I think, it's one of the interesting things that's turned out from this year. Right. It has been. And overall, I think the product compared to last season has improved overall from a night to night basis, yeah. even though a little bit too many blowouts in my liking. In my liking. Yeah. Yeah. But I, uh, here's the, it's not bad if you have NBA TV. It's bad if, yeah. Like, because there's probably four games a night and you'll get one or two. That's like down to the wire, I yeah. think personally, or like one that's down to the last four minutes, one that's down to the wire, and then the other two aren't worth watching mm. for a second. That's fair, for that's understandable. Second. But if you're if you're on one of the days where there's only two or three games, they'll all be blowouts. It's the worst. They either will all be close games or all blowouts. Yeah, I, I hate those days. Yeah, yeah. Um, but hey, do you want to wrap it up? Actually, but we're obviously gonna talk about the All Star game last. Oh, we. Shoot, I didn't even mention the All Star Game. My fault. We yeah. will, we will. Okay. But but before we wrap it up, I want to ask you because you asked me what my favorite dunk was in the dunk contest. Do you have a favorite play from the All Star Game? Uh, obviously, Toronto, Kobe, and LeBron. Ooh. Them going after that possession with uh, I, Quavo courtside. Uh, Drake courtside. Oh, Drake. Drake yeah, I think one of the greatest moments in All Star Game history. I'll take that moment. That's yeah, that that's a good moment. I was gonna say, uh where I think it was Steph bounced it 
and Giannis dunked on the other side. Oh, New Orleans. Yeah. yeah or yeah. no, no, no. It was in, it was in Charlotte. And then Giannis had Charlotte. to like right. off the baseline. Giannis had to cock it back yeah. from from the air, getting the ball from the air, and then he slammed it. Or I think um, D Wade's last year in the league as a LeBron fan, mm-hmm. it was D Wade's last year in the league. Him and LeBron were on the same All Star team, and he threw an oop off the backboard to mm-hmm. LeBron. Mm-hmm. That was great what they did that year too with having. Dirk and D Wade be on the All Star team. Oh yeah, it's like I really a, enjoyed that. Yeah, it's like a special occasion. Dirk was hooping. Dirk came in and it had like nine points right away. Three of three mm-hmm. from three. Mm-hmm. I like that one. That was a great year for the yeah, All Star weekend. That was. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. The NBA, we get one good game every three years. I'm hoping that I actually think that this year is going to be good. I think so. And maybe that this is a good segue. I think so too. It's a, I, I think so too. It's a good segue. I think what ruined last year. Uh, the, that NBA All Star Game mm-hmm. was the fact that they did like l- that they did the live draft, on like the the game of yeah they were picking players the game of and I think they wrote the players are all they're all off the wrong way uh huh yeah that's true I also think like East versus West has value now like we got to a point where it was stale and then we did um they obviously had the Kobe method and then drafting where players were just picking which. Drafting and players were picking, and there were the captains. It was LeBron. You obviously had the hilarious moment when KD didn't want to draft James Harden. Mm -hmm. Then it's been LeBron and Giannis. I think, like, it's been fun seeing them draft, but I think, like, East versus West has regained that value. And, like, I think they're going to want to show that. It has. It has. Over the years, the talent level in both conferences, especially in the East, has has improved greatly. So So, do you got the the All-Star team pulled up? No, I don't have the rosters. You're all good. You're all good. Who do you think's gonna win though? East versus West. I got West. You got West. Yeah, I just think they got more size. They yeah, got more size for sure. compared to the Eastern for Conference, sure. especially yeah. with Joel and Julius out. Yeah, especially Joel being out. Yeah, that that's the real one. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, but I don't know. The West having Jokic in an All Star game, Jokic and Luca. That's like. Jokic and Luka are great, but they're, they're the not worst great. They're all-star, not great all-star game star Especially Jokic, he's a horrible all-star game player. Yeah. He's horrible at it. I think yeah. the, the highest amount of points he's had in all-star game was like... Seven. Seven, <laughs> around that, yeah. Yeah, which is... He just does not care when he's out there. No. But his, it's also like... It just does a fist play style. Mm-hmm, it, it doesn't. It does a fist play. Same with Luka, though. But I mean, Luka's going to get his points. Mm-hmm. Um, who do you think's going to be all-star game MVP? Let's see. Um, I don't think it's gonna. I don't think. I don't think it's gonna be LeBron. Tatum won it. Uh, I didn't. I think he did win it. What? Boston fan. Boston. Uh, he won it last year. Tatum won it last year. Oh, yeah, he did win it last year. Um, I believe Steph won one recently. I know LeBron won one in Cleveland. When that happened Shocker He, he was hooping city. that game That's the city He had the game winner That's the city He did the fade Yeah The fade well, Who was he posting up Jared Allen I think so yeah oh. I You know think... what I'm, I'm gonna say book I'll say book Off the bench Wow That's a great pick Why not That's yeah, a great why pick not? Off the bench Yeah off the bench He's gonna He's, he's oh, gonna yeah, be locked in He'll have the games playing to be Yeah started. He's gonna be locked in Wow That's a that's a great pick. You know my thoughts on book. I'm a known, I'm a known Booker supporter. Mm-hmm. Um, my number one would probably be book. Now that you said that, greatness. And then number I, I two, know. number two, I know ball man. My uh, my other pick, just in case, yours doesn't work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, hmm, that's a good question. Part of me thinks Giannis. Mm-hmm. Part of me thinks Giannis mm-hmm. this year too, because Giannis always carries in the in the All Star game. He always tries. Yeah, in the All Star games, like super high tempo, and that fits his game perfectly. Yeah. Transition. Yeah, so I could see him. Um, we're talking about Dame. Dame goes bananas anytime there's an All Star game. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe Tyrese. Tyrese is starting, and it's in Indianapolis. Right. So, I think that there's a handful of guys. I'll take book one, and then I'll take. Tyrese too. Book one, and then for my backup pick, I'm gonna go with the much safer option. I got Steph. By the way, when people say Tyrese, you think Halliburton or Maxi? Um, uh, Tyrese Gibson. 
the R&B singer? No. No. But but for real. Uh, Gibson. Yeah, but if we're, if we're talking about basketball and I said, yeah, Tyree should be an all-star. I want to be Gibson, but I'll, I'll say Halliburton. Okay, good, man. I just want to make sure. Because I was talking to somebody the other day, and I said Tyrese, and they are like, oh, I thought you were talking about Maxi." No. And I was very thrown off. Hey, shout out Tyrese Gibson, though. Baby boy, classic. Classic right. for sure. You want to get us out of here? Yes, sir. Hey, if you guys have stayed till the end of this video, we appreciate the love and support. Thank y'all so much. Follow us on all social media platforms, IG, TikTok, and YouTube. Excuse me. All the handle adlers from the Bates. We appreciate if you guys could drop a quick follow and subscribe. Post daily content. Great listen. Great, not listen. Great viewing for you guys as well. Mike, got anything else for you to say? I'm going to end it with how I ended it last episode. Or I didn't end it, but I said it in the last episode. Never bet against 15. Never. Never ever. Never bet against 15. We're going to be here for a long time, man. Stay tuned. Get comf- comfortable. It's gonna be a long ride. Don't worry. Can't number wait. number nine got something to say. Hell no. Nah. Number nine got something Hell to say. Hell no. Nah. I'm I'm Stafford don't put no fear in my heart. You don't put fear in my heart. Not I know number bad. ten does. Who does? Number ten. Herbert. Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup. Oh hell no. Nah. <laughs> Snee. Bro, McDuffie's strap. Nah, Snee. Snee. Strap. Snee got burned on the last play of the game. Strap. Strap. McDuffie. Seatbelt. Seatbelt. McDuffie. And McDuffie, McDuffie Snee. had a decent Seatbelt. argument for uh. Super Bowl MVP See, before bro. Mahomes went bananas. That, yeah, that brother was phenomenal. I love McDuffie. Yeah. Nick S- Bolton. He was getting cooked. You're but on front it doesn't watch. matter. It doesn't matter. This man said Nick Bolton was a difference maker on the Chiefs defense to start the year off. I waved him off. Don't worry. I, but I was the only one who was saying that the Chiefs defense was legit mm-hmm. since week one. Right. I, I, I said that too. Yeah, that's true. But, yeah, like, that exactly. wasn't a Chiefs fan. Exactly. But Nick Bolden. That wasn't a Chiefs fan. Nick Bolden, it. Super Bowl champ, two, two-time Super Bowl champ, so it don't matter. Kadarius Tony, two-time Super Bowl champ. Exactly. Salute to him. Miko Hartman, three-time Super Bowl champ. Hey, you can't. Hey, you can't count us out, man. Can't count us out. Respect greatness. Yep. Ended right there. All right. Let it up. Peace.